bear with me. So this is what, let me give you fundamentals of every front-end framework ever made in two minutes, okay? Let me do that. So, so this is how it works, right? And this is literally enough to understand the whole front-end, right? So you have the hard DOM, you have, you have DOM, right? So you have document object model. This is like hard HTML, let's call it hard HTML, right? So, and then we have JavaScript, right? And then before we had all of these fancy frameworks, right? We would manipulate this DOM with JavaScript, right? We would get some element. We would be document.get element by ID, right? And then we would do something to that element. We would either add an event listener to it. We would either change it directly. We would insert some text in it, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, but then, yeah, as obviously you know, as the complexity of the websites increased, right? As we started building single page applications, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? We needed to create these frameworks. We, we aggregated all of the knowledge we learned for 20, 30 years of the browser, we aggregated them into these small utilities like React, Vue.js and stuff, right? So we can manipulate this DOM easier, right? So we don't really have to think much about this DOM, but we think about the data, right? And then the data renders and then the DOM updates, right? So it's really all data driven, right? But then at one point we realized that this DOM, this HTML page, this document, this HTML document grows really big, right? And then it becomes inefficient, right? Because we need to figure out, we need to keep some state, some uh, footprint, some schema of this hard DOM, we need to keep it somewhere. So it's, it's faster to check what has changed, right? So we have this DOM, it would be very inefficient, right? Whenever something changes, that we use the DOM API, document object API to model API to run through all of this crap, right? So what we then did, we invented virtual DOM, right? Then we invented the virtual DOM. And this, this virtual DOM, which is all, is just a JavaScript kind of object representation of this hard DOM, right? So virtual DOM is just JavaScript object or JavaScript objects, right? It's almost like JSON, right? So now when, when something changes in this hard DOM, we compare these objects because it's a lot faster than interfacing with the web page using the DOM API. Because keep in mind uh, that uh, JavaScript language and DOM are not the same thing. DOM is not part of JavaScript language. JavaScript language has basic constraints like functions and statements and loops and promises and stuff and the browser has the DOM. So you have the JavaScript language, you have JavaScript language, right? And then you have the DOM, this is the DOM, right? So these two have to interface, they have to talk to each other. The JavaScript using the, the DOM API interfaces with the, with the document, right? Well, now JavaScript actually has this virtual DOM and it stores the state of your page as a JavaScript object. And then this um, reconciliation algorithm that React team created, it's called the reconciliation algorithm, does the checks, right? So you have this, you have, you have a tree or a graph, right? That looks like this. You have a tree basically, right? And that tree represent your DOM, right? So basically you have, imagine this is a div and then inside of the div, we have two paragraphs. And let's imagine inside of a paragraph, we have a span, right? So this is essentially what this virtual DOM is. We store these trees and then, you know, we compare them. And then this is what reconciliation algorithm does. It traverses this virtual tree and then tries to be quick and figure out, okay, this paragraph has changed. So I'm just going to render this paragraph here, you know, but because this paragraph has a span inside of it as well, I need to be careful not to re-render the span as well, because, you know, technically, these two things are the elements, right? So this is basically the whole fundamental of React. And React really is just a view library. So it's a very, very simple library, which is why React.js is so popular, right? 
because uh, React fundamentally is not a framework like Angular JS, which is a full-fledged framework that comes with a React. Uh, sorry, that comes with a router, with the modules, and huge TypeScript support and decorators and all of that fancy stuff, right? So uh, React is just a rendering library. And going back to the old JavaScript days of jQuery, right? Uh, React is just a rendering library, which means it just kind of figures out what to render on the page, right? So you could, of course, you could build your own version of React, right? Where you would have some data. So you have some data, right? Some, you know, state, which is an object or whatever. And then using the, the DOM API, you figure out when to re-render the, the page. So this could be an interesting project, right? If you're saying, hey, I would like to understand front-end, let's not say React, let's say front-end. What you could do is you could say, okay, let's imagine that I have my own div in here that has an ID of app, right? And how can I now build my own little React JS, right? Or call it uh, uh, Fiat JS, right? And then this is where you could start, right? So you could say, okay, I'm gonna, uh, you know, do like, uh, you know, document dot query selector, you know, app. And this is where you could technically start, right? You could now render certain things inside of this div when some of your data changes, right? So you could have a state here of some sort, right? And then you could build your own rendering, rendering function, right? here, write logic here, that re-renders when this state changes, right? And then you could, you know, have a two, two states, right? You could have a previous and current state, so you could have, you know, current state, and you could uh, have a previous state, right? And then you could, of course, use Lodash or something, you could, you could use something like deep comparison, right, or whatever, check what, I mean, of course, you cannot build in 20 minutes the whole React library, that would be silly, but then you could, you could, you know, uh, you could use your render function then, so you you could have a button somewhere, right, when you, when I click this button, I want some of this stuff to update, etc., etc., right, so this is the right way if you really want to understand, but fundamentally, this is whole front end summed up in, 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 a, in a single explanation, right, so every single library out there does more or less exactly the same stuff. No matter if it's Vue or React or Angular or whatever, right? You have some div, like React has like, again, all of these modern frameworks, right? And then you have some engine, some rendering uh, uh, logic that figures out, okay, this object is different from this object. So, you know, using the DOM API, go grab that object there and re-render whatever is inside of that, right? Um, I think people give this whole thing too much of um, importance, right? Because the DOM in the modern browsers is incredibly fast, right? So people usually talk about performance of these things, but most people, most developers out there have, have actually never built an app that's um, that needs this performance. So in simple words, the reason why we're using React isn't really a performance for the most part, or Vue or Angular. It's it's really just this uh, abstraction, this encapsulation, right? We are encapsulated in, in, in a very finite amount of ideas, and then we can just keep reusing the same ideas. So the reason why we use frameworks isn't necessarily performance. People, a lot of younger developers, they talk about performance, but it's more about hiring and, you know, a lot of other things. But fundamentally, yeah, this is um, component is is just a function, right? So uh, there is nothing really. That's why I say there is nothing really special about any of these frameworks, because all of these things are just functions, right? So uh, you know, uh, 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 if you have a component called button, right? Uh, you know, if you if you have a component called button, right? I mean, heck. Even this button, native button in HTML, right, is just a function, right? So that's why same in React, right? Or any of these frameworks, right? A component is really just a function that returns some object that translates into HTML. And you could even build this for yourself as an example, right? It's not rocket science. You could represent, so you have to ask a fundamental question. How do I, how would I represent HTML through JSON, right? So say that you wanted to have a, uh, an object called button, right? Well, what would you have? You would have something like this, right? 
or let's call it an element. This is what the React and all of these frameworks do. You have some some concept of an element or a node. I think in in in, in React is called React node. Then there's a concept called element, which is more generic, more general, right? So fundamentally, right, you would have some function that that, that generates the JSON that this, that can be easily translated into HTML. And I'm using very simple words. I don't want to use fancy words just because it is a, a very simple concept. It's like I have some data, you know, some HTML represented as JSON. Well, what do you do? This is your input. What is the output? Well, the output is taking that JSON and turning it into HTML, right? So that is a, that is really a, a, all that there is. Now, of course, I'm not saying that, of course, a lot of these modern tools, they're very clever. A lot of super intelligent guys and girls have built amazing things to make it very like smart and stuff. But um, uh, so, so, so this is really what, what, what all of these things are. Like that's, and I think this is a very important lesson for everybody because don't overthink these frameworks. Like people talk about Svelte, React, this and that. It doesn't really matter, right? Why doesn't it matter? Well, it doesn't matter because all of them fundamentally have to use the DOM. They have to use DOM API. Why do they have to use it? Because there's no other API still to interface with the document object here, right? accept the DOM, right? So, so, so it's, it's not the conscious decision, it's rather a limitation, right? But this is the document, uh, this is, sorry, this is the document that describes your HTML page. And you can even see, I mean, for 30 years, this document as well represents the actual XML HTML page, right? So, so, so at the end of the day, this has been in the browser since dawn of time, right? So, um, so this is really what frontend is fundamentally. So if you wanna kinda internalize this more, say, okay, let me build a little library, few functions that I can describe through JSON and then build few functions that's gonna take this in JSON input and convert that into HTML payload. And then I'm gonna render. You don't have to worry about performance, right? So don't worry about reconciliation. You know, did I re-render re the whole thing or not, right? Because for example, 15, 20 years ago, I was literally building apps like this. We had a jQuery. So you, uh, 15 or 20 years ago, you had two choices, right? A lot of people, because we all sucked, right? We directly manipulated the DOM. So we didn't, we were so stupid that we didn't even store the state, you know, in JSON objects like var, I don't know, my state is whatever, but we would literally have something like, you know, I have this div and inside of this div, I have a paragraph that has the text. So, so what we would do back then, we would get the, we would literally say, okay, let me, let me get my paragraph, right? You know, I, I'm just going to be very, query selector didn't exist back there, but I'm just primitive example. And then I would check, hey, what is the state of this? And then as the time went by, we realized, hey, it's actually very stupid to keep the state as part of the uh, view, right? We, we, I need to, if I keep my state in the, let's say JavaScript and the objects and arrays and stuff, that's gonna be great, right? Then we, what we started doing, we started saying, you know, well, you know, I have my books in here, you know, a book has a title, you know, and it has, uh, you know, uh, author, right, whatever. And now I can actually keep my state in here. So when I change this state, I'm gonna call some render function that's gonna update this thing. What does it mean it's gonna update? Well, you know, the source of truth of state is always gonna be my data. And I'm gonna have some mechanism, some function that's gonna run when this data changes. So when I call, you know, add book uh, somewhere, some function, and I push uh, the book to this thing. Let's imagine this does like books.push new book, right? Then I had some logic, you know, what we, I just called the render, and then it makes sure to align, you know, the, the HTML state with the data. We didn't care much about reconciliation and all of that stuff. It was pretty much just, uh, we don't care, just re-render the whole page if need be, but it was a lot easier to build applications. And, and then we went from these things to AngularJS 1, Ember.js, Knockout.js, Vue.js, React.js, Stencil, and million, five billion of others, right? Uh, but this is the history of how front-end development uh, um, 
Exactly shoots them, yeah. So the DOM is, exactly. But at the end of the day, so basically front-end development is like this. How can I use the DOM API the least? So this is, this sums up the whole front-end development. How can I interface with the hard DOM the least amount of time possible? If I, with every optimization of me not needing to render something on the page, check its success, right? So, so if you ever wanted to build a new framework in JavaScript and, uh, you know, there's probably 16 already came out since I started this video, um, this is the question you would ask. So, okay, what is, why am I doing this, right? And I'm sorry, good evening, everybody. I'm, I'm sorry, I was just uh, uh, answering this, this uh, right? But this sums up really the front end development, right? And then now you can add a lot of details in between, you know, Vue.js and all of these things, right? As the new browser APIs were coming out, you know, then a lot of these tools were getting smarter. They were using, you know, more clever API. Browser has amazing APIs. You would be surprised what you can do with HTML5 history API. Uh, object assign and a lot of these awesome things, right? You can build your own little framework in, in two hours, right? Like that does, you know, if you use HTML5 history API, right? You can, you can build your, you know, your own uh, router in like two hours, right? Because every single router out there, React router, Vue router, they're really underneath using uh, using HTML5 history API, right? So, so again, it's not rocket science. It's not that hard. It's actually fairly simple, but you have to kind of get to know why the things are as they are today. And uh, the reason for that, of course, is, is that we had transitioned from directly working with the hard DOM, then we moved to being data-driven. So when my sum state changes, update the UI, and then we started with single page apps and all of these fancy things. All right, that, uh, yeah, that's it.